Hey everyone, um, so welcome to uh, my 1 to 1000 scale uh, Star Trek uh, original series Enterprise. Um, this is a model that I actually completed uh, just a little over a year ago when I sort of first modeled when I decided I was going to make a YouTube channel here and uh, start recording uh, some model building. Uh, and this was the first one that I was uh, that I that I kind of started recording and put together the videos. And this particular video um, is a sort of one-year um, re-release of the summary. Um, I I in the old days, whenever I started, I didn't really have a good sense about what that might look like. Um, and in fact, I built that summary a little bit later. But uh, it's a terrible summary if you think of. I think it's like 50 minutes or something which uh, that's not much of a summary. Uh, the model itself, um, I am just really love it. Um, it is uh, um, a ship and a model in general that I just, um, you know, from my, my childhood, it it's really was my first uh, spaceship, really, that I ever even knew about and um, and my first memories of, of anything like that. And so it's, it holds a pretty pretty near and dear place in my my heart, and and I really wanted to create something that was true to that original model, uh, and so I spent a lot of time actually on uh, a lot of the sites uh, where the the work for the restoration at the Smithsonian were undertaken, and I I used a lot of those resources. Just wonderful uh, work that's been done there um, in in figuring out what was done on that original models, and then um, and then kind of trying to recreate that here as best as I could. The main, um, the most important uh, bit of work here really was the base color. And as you can see, it's a fairly, um, it is a gray, but it's what we call enterprise gray. It is a fairly green, um, it has a lot of green tones. And as with all grays, they all have sort of underlying, there's the whole rainbow of colors underneath grays. And this particular one is fairly green. That's uh, just the way that it was with all grays. If you uh, depending on how warm the lighting is around you, it can look different um, in different lights, and so that's why we certainly see that to be the case um, with the Enterprise 2. But this is, as near as we know, a really, really close match. It is the uh, uh, XF-12, which is a Tamiya color, um, that's the JN Grey, and it's just white lightened down by about 10% with white. Uh, it gives you a really close match for the actual color uh, on the original model. All of the formulas for every single color you see here, I have it kind of all over the place and in various videos and just a, a mess. So one of the things that I'm doing is collecting all those together and you can find all of the formula uh, along with all of the, the relevant parts uh, in the description for this model. Uh, so definitely go check that out if you're interested. There is a lot of different shades of gray on the ship, uh, all, especially on the nacelles, a lot of the intercoolers and the various pieces here all have custom um, grays. Uh, and so you'll want to, uh, if you're interested, uh, you can get all those from uh, uh, from the description. I also uh, spent a fair bit of time on the Sarg collectors themselves, as you can see. Um, I settled on a fairly kind of a mixed couple of different effects going on there. It is essentially um, uh, a sort of a fire hydrant red, a really sort of crimsony red, uh, and then with some orange, uh, barely see that, but there's some orange pinstripes uh, on the Bissard fins. And then the whole dome itself has just been smoked with Tamiya, a couple of coats of Tamiya smoke. And I really loved the effect. I just found that it, it worked really well, especially given that it's not a lit model. Um, and so I needed something that could look kind of, have a sort of almost an internal kind of look to it and uh, it has a little bit of a glow. And having that orange, that go golden orange offset in there with the smoke, I just find that it is. And some of the pictures that I'm able to take in some lighting conditions, even here, you can see it gives a fairly, almost a neat kind of glow, uh, which is really, really, really wanted. Yeah. In terms of weathering, um, there are a couple of effects. You can see uh, the main being um, the sort of combination of what they call rust. Uh, I'm not sure how well you see that there. It's sort of a rusty kind of color, as well as a sort of a green, uh, what they call the green algae uh, effect as well. And you can see it's in various amounts throughout the model, actually. Uh, even on um, the secondary hull, you can see little bits of it, and certainly on the underside as well. Again, be able to see, hopefully you can see um, the 
different uh, those two colors you can even see it on the front there where it's got the kind of the the you know the tan and, and uh, the the green there so kind of a neat um, neat effect uh, also on the secondary there you can see quite a bit of the rust uh, which is again true to the real um, model the other uh, big weathering color is this soot uh, that you see on the nacelles itself that again was just part of the model or whatever you you know it's surely not soot but some kind of effect of the the warp nacelle uh, engines I guess uh, it's also on the backs as well you can see just a little bit there uh, and even uh, a little bit on the ship you can see here near the back on the the support pylons and a little bit on the back again just reflecting exactly what was on the real the uh, real model um, so try to stay true to that yeah, a couple of other effects, uh, not weathering, but just um, uh, components of the of the structure um, in include uh, the uh, little tan the little tan rings on the underside of the saucer section. Um, those I actually applied um, using uh, just a weathering uh, pencil, which I think turned out really, really good. That's kind of subtle, but. I think just the right uh, kind of shade of that golden uh, golden tan color and then as well actually use the same weathering pencils on the outline of the uh, landing uh, covers um, so pretty pretty happy with uh, the effect there I also you might notice um, added um, def uh, deflector grid uh, lines they're very subtle um, and depending on the lighting you may or may not see them very well. Um, they're just drawn on with pencil, uh, just a very, uh, fairly hard, I used a fairly hard pencil, and a compass, just a really big compass, and just kind of went out, uh, used um, the sort of, um, the blueprints that we've got, um, the excellent Sinclair uh, set of blueprints to get the exact measurements for those, uh, and I actually had an overlay that I was able to place down and uh, be able to get those exact uh, uh, deflector grid lines uh, mapped out and uh, drawn on working on the grid lines on the top of the primary hall tonight and uh, just have the next ring set up I thought it take a little picture show it and they're each they're in six and a half millimeters each time I always do the first time that, and the second time a little bit darker. There. You can see what I've done to get the shape that I want. I kind of bent, took a, a really stiff zip tie and just have it kind of bent into the shape that I want here so it's kind of just was able to because these are very stiff so it was able I was able to get kind of the the shape that I wanted so then it's just a matter of just lining up and being able to just run my lines um, pretty straightforward so, you know hold it nice and stiff I give it a couple just like that and then and then as I say knowing that of course it's going to, you know, you're going to be erasing that and it's not going to look that dark when it, when everything's said and done here. Um, but definitely, definitely works. I, I'm going with a really light pencil 4H um, finished top part of the saucer, getting um, my grid lines put on and erased. So depending again on angle, it either um, is hardly noticeable at certain angles and then if you get the right light you can definitely see the grid. I think the effect is pretty true to the actual model. They as well used pencil uh, actually they used a softer pencil than I used but they had a much larger surface and so um, proportionately for my size of scale um, uh, I used a little harder harder lead but I think the effect is uh, very similar uh, it also was really helpful uh, in drawing in the other another feature of the model which is the tan arc line which you see here um, 
having those, of course, the deflector grid Z tells you, you know, they, they did exactly lay, did exactly lay uh, within certain boundaries uh, that were very much easy then to be able to to do. Uh, if you didn't have the deflector grid, that'd be a little harder to know where to draw that. I mean, not impossible, but it does really make it a lot simpler uh, to do that. Um, and so, again, very happy uh, with the, the results of that uh, overall. Have a look at what that looks like. Yeah, that looks great. That's really exactly what I was looking for here. You might also notice uh, that I um, used a sort of a uh, under painting method for both the uh, bottom of the saucer and the top, the dome over the bridge. Um, Again, not lit, but uh, by using that, uh, leaving it very highly reflective on the surface, and then having the white uh, gloss paint underneath, um, I just feel like that gave it a really, a really great effect, uh, given the constraints of not uh, not having a light bulb under there. And the tip of the under uh, the planetary sensor node there, if you can make that out, there's just a little bit of the Enterprise gray on the main stalk, and then that little bit of a red tip. That's a very tiny detail, but a couple of other little details that aren't actually on the model, but that I added anyway, are the secondary running lights, just the little points there that you see on each side. Um, those aren't, again, part of this particular scale typically, but I got out the pin and wanted those because I know they're part of the uh, the model as it stands. And then uh, just a little bit of detail on the, the back of the sort of um, homing beacon and uh, landing uh, landing bay light system. Um, I tried to reflect again the actual way that that was done, which was in the real model used uh, that sort of green plexi, which I kind of reflected here. And then inside there you can actually make out, you can probably just barely see there, but there are uh, the same uh, three stalks there and how it came together. Uh, for me, uh, as a lifelong Star Trek fan and this being the sh first kind of spaceship that I ever kind of appreciated and, and just was so in awe of uh, as a very young boy. Um, this is kind of the best one. I've built lots of them in my life and this is the one uh, that I just, uh, I love. I, I kind of really just love to, I love the size of it. This scale, the 1 to 1000 is really, really great. Um, as you can see, just being able to hold it and turn it around and see it um, is it just never gets old. That's really uh, it. That's the key points of the model. Um, and 101 details. As I say, you definitely can go check uh, the detailed uh, detailed videos. I think there's five of them. They're quite lengthy and uh, not for the faint of heart. Um, but uh, there are descriptions kind of uh, in there about what's kind of is in the content. So if you, there's something specific you're looking for, you might be able to go dig that out. I'll have links to them at the end of the video. Um, and they're also, of course, uh, in the description. You can also go check out the original summary version if you like. Um, it has a little bit of extra content actually, mostly just around uh, some of the <laughs> challenges I had, uh, especially with the bridge. Um, if you're interested in that, you can certainly go check it out. For that reason, it is uh, a lot of the same materials, but just a lot more drawn out. Um, if you did enjoy this video, um, all the usual stuff that I asked for, please uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below. That really helps. Um, and uh, and even leave a comment, and those are always fun. I like to see them. Um, and if you really enjoyed the model and the approach and the style of, of the work, uh, then uh, consider even subscribing. That way you can kind of get notified. If you especially if you turn on the little bell there, blah blah blah. I'm sure you know all of that uh, to get notified when I release something new. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed the new summary and enjoyed this build, and that you'll tune in for the next ones down the line. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.